So today we're going to look at using transistors in circuits. In particular, we're going to look at the bipolar junction transistor, or BJT style. And basically there's two different kinds. We have the NPN transistor and then we have a PNP transistor. Now the easiest and simplest way to look at a transistor is basically acting like a switch. They can turn on and off components in a circuit. And the way they do that is there's three elements to a transistor. There is something called a base, the emitter, and the collector. And when you look at the diagram on the way these transistors would appear, you've got a lead that comes in, and then you've got this that goes to a right angle, and then you've got an arrow. And it's either pointing out, like the NPN, or it's pointing in, like our PNP. Now the way this is, in either case, these sections here on both our PNP and our NPN is called the base. And the base is essentially what acts as the switch of the transistor. It takes a small amount of current and it's usually used with some kind of resistor. And when fed into it, that causes the transistor to switch on and it connects our two points on the transistor completing the circuit. And these other two points is where our emitter and collector is. Now, depending on the type of transistor, it depends where those are. On an NPN, the collector is on the top here, and then your emitter is at the bottom. It's where the arrow is. So instinctively, on the PNP, your emitter is on the top, because that's, again, where the arrow is located, and your collector is on the bottom. Now, the purpose of the arrow is to denote current flow. The arrow is in the direction where current through the transistor will flow. And that also determines the connection points of where your base is supposed to be in order to trigger it. That's one of the essential differences between the PNP and NPN transistor. And what it is, with an NPN transistor, when you compare your base voltage to your emitter voltage, the potential difference there should be high, which means it's got to come from the positive side of your voltage source. So it takes a positive source because the emitter is on the ground. So that's low compared to our base here. So anything that has a higher voltage than what your emitter is will act as the on condition for your transistor. And again, generally, the opposite is true for the PNP. The PNP emitter is on the top, which means, compared to the base, the base condition has to be low. It has to have a low potential difference in order for this transistor, the PNP, to activate, because the emitter is on the high side. And so as you can see, we have a switch to activate our NPN. We've got a push button to activate our PNP. And the push button, again, is on the low side. It's connected to ground. Our switch for the NPN is connected to the high side, which is, of course, the positive from the battery. So, we've got two LEDs here. We've got a green one and a red one. And we've got a 100 ohm resistor here to limit our current through the whole circuit. So if I turn the switch for the NPN on, both LEDs light up. You see the green light up and you see the red light up. So. This is feeding a current to the base, which is then telling the transistor to turn on, which is then connecting the emitter and collector together, and completes our circuit. Now, with our PNP, well, if I push the button here, our LEDs come on as well. And because of that, you know, we've got our low side connected to the PNP transistor, which again tells that transistor to turn on which connects its emitter and collector and completes the circuit. Now, there's a couple fun things you can do with transistors, and it explains part of the reason why things like children's toys or water alarms or things like that work the way that they do. Now, before this, I'm going to actually turn off the light that's over here to make it a little easier to see. So I've turned off the light, and I've got my hands here. But I'm going to touch 
the base terminal of the P and P transistor and let's look what happens. You should be able to see it. The red LED over here is faintly turning on and the reason for that is the human body provides a small amount of energy and what I'm doing is effectively grounding the base terminal just like it would be here but it's just enough for the PNP to turn on some again it's not turning on fully to light up the LED brightly but it is able to make it kind of come on some so that you can get a small current through there again it's not enough to light our green LED but it is enough to light a red one now let's do that with the NPN I come over here and touch the base of the NPN now you should be able to still see it come on it's not as bright as when I had it over here on the PNP but again it lights up so that's part of the reason why transistors can be used for detecting water leaks because the NPN and PNP transistors are very sensitive they don't need a whole lot of current at the base to trigger them so even the slightest bit of current can tell a transistor to come on and when it's hooked up to another device like another transistor putting these together then that would actually allow full current through the other device to come on so it could activate something like an alarm for instance now the other thing I can do is use my body to carry extra current through it from some kind of voltage source so again if I've got my finger on the base of the PNP and I come over here to my voltage source and put my finger on the negative terminal now it gets brighter because now I'm carrying that low voltage difference through my body to the transistor and since it's able to pro provide more of a difference there at the transistor it gets brighter and when I take my finger off of course it gets dim again so coincidentally if I'm holding on to the base of the PNP I mean NPN transistor and I come over here to the 6 volt side of my source put my finger on it and now that gets bright because now I'm able to transfer a positive voltage or a high potential difference to the NPN transistor and that comes on now if I put it on something like the 3 volt see the 3 volt isn't providing enough of a difference compared to 6 volts and you can see the brightness difference there that's just a little thing to show. Put this back on. Now, in another video that I've just recently done, I built a custom alarm circuit that used the properties of transistors to activate other devices and ultimately create a two stage alarm. So, I will have an annotation and a link for that video so you can see how a transistor can be used in a much larger circuit. But anyway, that's just a small video here showing how transistors work in circuits.